University are the best years of your life, or are they? When you think about university, you think about this. Because that's what social media shows you, and you very rarely see this. All the time I hear adults saying things like, oh, to be back at university, to be back in the days where nothing mattered, to just be chilling with your friends, to be partying, to be having the best time. And now that I'm in third year of university, I can wholeheartedly say that this has been one of the hardest experiences of my life. Yes, in retrospect, very rewarding in many ways, but there were just so many things which no one told me before I started and which I think remain stereotypes and expectations about what university is is that can make people's experience just rubbish when your experience doesn't line up with these crazy expectations. So today I'm going to talk about why university might not be the best time of your life, why it's hard and why everyone's experience at university is so different and why your experience is valid even if you're struggling. At the end of this video I'm also going to talk a bit about my personal hardships with university and I think it's important for me to make videos like this occasionally just to keep it real online because I'm someone who tends to romanticise my life and see the positive things wherever possible but life is not always dreamy, life can be very very hard at university so let's talk about it. Before I fully get into today's video I also want to say thank you to the incredible sponsor and it's very relevant. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. I love the mission of BetterHelp. If you are struggling with your mental health at university as all of us do at some point I genuinely think BetterHelp is such an incredible solution. It's basically online professional therapy. BetterHelp assesses your needs and I was so impressed when I did this. You do a very detailed questionnaire to work out exactly what your needs are, like why you need to see a therapist, things that you're feeling, things that might be contributing to your mental health struggles right now. And then they match you with a licensed professional therapist. And it's even as detailed as asking you, like, do you have spiritual beliefs? Would you like a female therapist or a person of color or someone who specializes in Christian therapy? You can start communicating within 48 hours. It's not just a self-help crisis line. It's professional therapy where you can learn about yourself and your struggles. There's a network of over 20,000 therapists. So if you don't get on with your therapist, you can easily change. And it's a lot cheaper than most in-person therapy. If you're looking for a really tangible solution to help you with your mental health, I highly recommend BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com forward slash unjadedjade and you can join the over 2 million plus people who are benefiting from their services. And if you follow that link I just mentioned, you can get a special offer just for the Unjaded community with 10% off your first month. Let's get into the video. Okay, so I think the first thing that makes university so hard is these crazy expectations that it will be amazing, that it will be the best years of your entire life. For me personally, my parents never went to university, so they manifested that kind of energy for me. You know, like, oh, if I had gone to university, I'm sure it would have been the best days of my life. They didn't go through the hardships of it, so they also couldn't project those realistic hardships to me. And uni can be that, and it's true that it is often a space of freedom compared to the working world. But I think this misses so many of the hardships that really are there. Going along with this, there is such a stereotype of who the uni student is, especially in the UK. The uni student is an extroverted person who loves partying, loves a drink, loves going clubbing but somehow also keeps on top of all their studies, is just so like a social animal. And even though I go to an untraditional university, so I don't have to deal with the UK university stereotype as much, I just don't fulfill that stereotype. Like I am not a big clubbing person. I really don't drink that much. I do I occasionally go out and I enjoy it, but it's just not me. And there's a lot of subconscious peer pressure to be that, like Freshers' Week. The whole idea of Freshers' Week is to just get drunk and go clubbing all the time and get with people. And if that's not what you enjoy, it's really hard to own that and still be perceived as cool. I think a lot of universities still have a stereotype of being a space for white, privileged, rich people from private schools. There are a lot of institutions still like that. And as I say, I went to an untraditional university, so that's not my experience. And I am also white and middle class, so wouldn't have had like as hard of a time with that. But I think that's another expectation which people often miss is that these spaces aren't as welcoming for everyone. So it's not necessarily gonna be the best experience of your life if the space doesn't feel made for you. And then there's the whole part of it, which is like your first time living away from home. Bloody hell. Like, I remember when I first went to uni and 
it just dawned on me how much I appreciate my mum doing my laundry and cooking for me every day and how much mental space that gives you to not have to do those things. The time after school where I finished my homework and finished my YouTube stuff was the time I could finally relax. And suddenly that time was the time where I had to look after myself, clean the house, like do all these adulting activities. And when you're not used to it, it's just a shock. And then you've also got to keep up with academics, you know, explore a new area, you don't know where things are, there might be cultural differences if you're studying abroad. Maybe you've never even taken a train alone in your life. Maybe you're from somewhere super rural and now you're in a city and everything that you do is just off your own back. There's also so much homesickness. Like one of the memories which can make me cry the, the easiest is the memory of waving goodbye to my dad in first year when I first went to uni because he started crying as he waved me off and I could just see him in the distance slowly breaking down. And I was just like, oh my God, I don't see my dad cry. Like it just hit me that I wasn't gonna see him for a long time. And I think especially if you're close to your family and you're so embedded in your family dynamic, leaving that is just hard. Like wondering how your family are day to day, like calls can only do so much. And homesickness is often like a suck it up kind of thing. People are like, I don't know, people just don't think about homesickness, but it can really affect you, especially at the start. Another hard part of uni is finding your people. This is the hard part anywhere, moving to a new school, moving to a job, just finding people you resonate with. So much of university is luck, like the people you get put in a flat with, the people you sit next to, the people who are in your class. And if you don't find your people, university is incredibly lonely. It's the kind of experience you need to lean on people to enjoy. Like you need to be able to go through the hard final season or final exams with friends. You wanna share memories with people who you like. You don't wanna fall prey to peer pressure. You want people who understand who you are and respect who you are. It took me a long time to feel truly comfortable with people. Like I reflect on first year and I, I had a lot of friends. I spoke to so many people and I could tell you a lot about different people. And I was like, oh wow, this is so great. I have loads of friends. And then I went home in summer and I was like, mm, but who do I FaceTime? Like, who do I actually check in with? Who would I have a day-to-day -day conversation with? And I didn't really have anyone. And it made me really scared to go back in second year because I was like, I don't know who my people are. And so I learned a lot in this experience that it's cool to have a lot of touch point relationships, but you need your people. You need a few people you can rely on and that you know are gonna be there for you. So that's, that's a challenge. Another challenge is discovering who you are and like identity crises. I'm saying all these things like, oh, you know, resisting the stereotype of university, finding your people, all of that. But the, the first step to doing that is knowing who you are. And this is probably the first time you've ever had the chance to exist outside of your family and your hometown and these narratives people already know about you. And so you can craft a new identity or you can live by your old one, but your old one is forced to change in certain ways. So you're in this constant period of like experimentation and coming back to your roots to try and work out like who actually am I? How do I actually wanna live my life? And that's so hard to do alongside the stress of everything else. And then obviously there's the workload and and the stress of academics. I don't know why people kept telling me during A-levels that, oh my God, uni is so much easier than A-levels. A-levels are the hardest you'll ever have to work in your life. And maybe that's true for some institutions or some subjects, but not my university. I've never worked so hard in my life. I am writing minimum, minimum an essay a week. I am like constantly deep in readings for classes and I'm constantly trying to catch up. It is academically challenging, which is also fulfilling, but it's a lot of work. And there's just times where it gets too much and you feel burnt out and like all those other aspects of your life, like the social aspects and all of that make the academic stuff feel 10 times worse. And then if you don't like your subject, that's a whole other thing. Like realizing the, the subject you picked at university, you don't, you're not actually passionate about. And there's all these expectations to love your subject, to breathe your subject, to carve a career out of whatever you're studying at university. And maybe you realize that it's just not for you and you just wanna get through it to get the degree and be done with it. And then this one, I really don't see people talking about that much. And that is financial pressure. I have so many friends at university who work their literal asses off to stay there. Taking on so many side jobs, working night shifts, all these things just to be able to afford to, you know, 
cook dinner <laughs> alongside all the uni work just to stay there and exist and pay rent and it's hard you're not working when you're a student you are doing academics and if you work on top of that that's just so much pressure not everyone has the cushion of their family's finances to support them so yeah there's just a multitude of different challenges that make uni really hard for me personally because I go to an untraditional university and I've been fortunate enough to study abroad for most of the time some other challenges which have just really been hard are literally living on top of people like I have had roommates my whole university time apart from one semester in Berlin and I'm an extrovert so I love people I lo I've loved all the roommates I've lived with but it's hard when you've got so much work and you're already feeling so pressured and then to still share a space with someone at all times even when you're both stressed like that is really challenging you learn so much about yourself there's like no escape <laughs> for me too like cultural differences has been such a difficult one like i'm the only british person in my university which is cool and like i love that and like i love learning from other people and like we're all just people at the end of the day you can get on with anyone from anywhere but I also had to think a lot about my identity as someone from a British culture and what it means to interact in British ways and how that's very different and maybe very indirect compared to other cultures and uh, learning about different communication styles. It's just this extra barrier to feeling comfortable around people. And then living abroad again is like, oh my God, different languages, got to work out a new system. Feeling like I don't feel comfortable here. I don't belong here. I don't exist here. Like when I first moved to Seoul, I was like, whoa, this is so different from everything I've ever experienced before. Which again, so much, so much to potentially learn from, but also can be really hard when you're not used to that and when you want comfort because there's other challenges going on in your life. For me personally, the fact that my uni degree moves us every semester is such a double-edged sword because I feel like, wow, I am living my, my dream life. I'm being able to live in cool places and get visas. And you know, I'm, I'm moving to Argentina in September, which is mad. And I feel weird even talking about anything bad about such a, an incredible experience. But at the same time, it has been one of the most challenging things I think I'll ever experience because I have, what, four or five months in one place. It's so hard, you know, you have to do the whole process of learning a culture, learning where everything is, learning all of that. And then just when you get comfortable, you move again. Just when you've made friends, just when you finally feel at home, you move again and you have to do the hard part again and again and again. And it's just exhausting and you crave a bit of stability. So I'm very grateful for this experience, but I'm also ready to like, settle in a place for a bit longer. I've also experienced a lot of imposter syndrome and just feeling like not good enough because everyone's just so intelligent and brilliant and that's amazing to learn from but can also be hard and you don't feel very confident. I've personally dealt with like a very bad love relationship and break up and navigated that during uni and that was a whole challenge in itself. I just think older generations look at us and be like oh they're just snowflakes like oh what the challenges in their life are oh their mental health and what relationship challenges but this stuff is so tough it's really hard it really makes you question who you are and your space in the world and whether you'll be loved and how you deserve love and all these really important questions for your life i feel like you learn a lot of that at university and there's also so much pressure to have a relationship maybe all your friends are in a relationship and you're like oh my god i want to be in one too but then you just settle for anyone who's there because you want that experience. And finally, for me personally, one of the biggest challenges of uni, which prevents me from fully loving it, is the intensity of the workload. It is unforgiving much of the time. One of my best friends, her country has literally gone into a war. So, you know, it's a pretty life debilitating situation. And there's still an expectation that you've got to get the work done. Like you can have extensions, you can have absences, but you've still got to get all of this, these crazy number of essays done. And it's just hard. It's really, really hard to navigate all of those different elements, like moving and, and different cultures, working out who you are, and then this insane workload, which does not forgive you for failing. So uni is hard, 
I hope I've convinced you a little bit to just be proud of yourself if you're at university because there are so many challenges and it's easy to overlook them. And I just hope you know that is no shame in seeking help, better help, a great option to find a licensed therapist to help you. I personally go to therapy and it's amazing just to learn about myself and help me deal with my own challenges. There's no shame in seeking help from people around you, like talking to peers, talking to your family. There's no shame going home as much as you need to in order to deal with homesickness or or the shift like go to university near home come home every weekend come home for a week it's fine whatever you need to just be able to navigate the challenges do it and finally there is no shame in switching subject in taking a gap year in taking a break and taking an absence in dropping out like all of it I fully support if it is in your gut feeling that this is what you need to do in order to be a happier human and to live your most authentic path, then do it. Thank you guys so much for watching and holding space for me and my experiences because yeah, they're, they're not always been the easiest times and I love uni, but there are still challenges. I actually have a question for all my uni and postgrad students out there. What is one piece of advice you would give your younger self before university? What do you wish you knew? What do you wish someone had told you? Please flood the comment section with this advice and I really think this can become an online space where people could come to this video and check out this advice and hopefully see a more real side to university which could help them. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video and I hope you have a wonderful day. Also my casual magic is that I'm filming this video with a real jade heart with me, which is just, I don't know, so special. An unjaded heart. Bye.